Hello everyone and welcome for design lecture DMS. So today we will discuss our new module uh, that is design of IC engine. As we know that uh, world need transportation to fill the most of the basic need either in the form of one or another way. The internal combustion engines plays a very important role in this context. It needs different kind of fuel to work from the past and a few from a very uh, to the future also. The world is working on the field of IC engine, its system and its uh, betterment. So as we know that the fuel consumption is quite more as the users are very more uh, huge in quantity. Uh, so the consumption uh, we are now shifting from conventional energy sources to non-conventional energy sources. So that technology we are doing and we providing, uh, we are you know, keeping engines are better and better. So the efficiency get worked and the uh, hazardous wastage will be reduced, which is in the form of air or in the form of uh, any other form. In the internal combustion engine is an engine in which the combustion or fuel such as a petrol diesel takes place inside this engine cylinder and that combustion is occur inside the cylinder okay so that's why we are uh, uh, mentioned this is as an ic engine so let's see <clears throat> a basic classification so in the basic classification, there are uh, two types. First, external combustion engine, internal combustion engine. Second, based on according to the basic engine design, it could be a reciprocating one and it could be a rotary one. According to the type of fuel, it's a petrol engine, diesel engine, <clears throat> gas engine, and alcohol engine according to the number of strokes it's four stroke and two stroke engine according to the method of ignition spark ignition compressor ignition and hotspot ignition according to the working cycle auto cycle diesel cycle all combine both water and di uh, diesel that can we say as a dual combustion engine cycle according to the fuel supply and mixture preparation carburetor type that is a fuel supply through using carburetor or injected type so in this the fuel injected into the inlet ports or inlet manifold uh, fuel uh, through the injector according to the number of cylinder single cylinder multi cylinder according to the method of cooling air cooled water cooled nowadays uh, liquid cooled uh, sorry oil cooled engines are available then uh, next type speed of engine slow speed medium speed and high speed engine according to the cylinder arrangement vertical horizontal in line v radial opposite cylinder or piston engines then according to the wall and port design and its location overhead eye head that is called as eye head then side wall is said as L head which are in a two stroke engines uh, four stroke engine in two stroke engines there is uh, based on the port cross scavenging loop scavenging and uniform scavenging method of governing hit and miss govern engine 
quantitatively governed engine and qualitatively governed engine. So based on the application, automotive engines for land transformation, marine engines for ship, aircraft engines, then industrial engines and prime, prime movers for electrical generators. So these are the basic classification of engines. So whatever the engine you are considering, it could be uh, in any segment. Okay. So let's see the comparison between internal combustion engine and external, uh, sorry, internal combustion engine and external combustion engine. In external combustion, the combustion of air fuel is takes place in an outside cylinder that we can say example is a boiler. And in, the, in internal um, combustion takes place inside the cylinder. Uh, external combustion, high ratio of weight and bulk to output due to the pressure of auxiliary affairs apparatus like boiler condenser hence it's a heavy and cumbersome uh, in internal it is light in weight compact due to the low ratio of uh, weight and bulk to output external working pressure and temperature inside the engine cylinder is low hence the ordinary alloys are used for manufacturing of the engine cylinder and its part internal the working pressure and temperature inside the engine cylinder is very high hence the special alloys are required required uh, to trans uh, to uh, heat transfer to maintain the heat transfer rate otherwise it can be seize the components external the engines are running smoothly and silent due to the outside combustion uh, in internal, a very noise operation uh, because uh, the combustion, power transmission, everything is placed at a single location. So the noise is quite created. External combustion, it can be use cheap or low cost fuel. Uh, we can use a solid fuels also. But in internal condition uh, combustion, we need high grade fuel with a proper filtration. Otherwise, it provides uh, hazardous gases and which is very harmful for us because the users of uh, IC engine is very high. Uh, the low efficiency about to 15 to 20 percent. Uh, it having internal in combustion engines having higher efficiency about to 35 to 40 percent in external combustion engine the higher requirement of water for dissipa uh, dissipation of energy through the cooling system uh, as we can design based on the uh, water air as well as uh, oil cooled type of uh, engine so the water requirement is very less uh, those uh, engines are air cooled there, there is no requirement of water to cooling purpose external engine the high starting torque and internal engine it's a uh, uh, it's not a self starting so we need to provide initial start Next one, the comparison between four stroke and two stroke as the IC engine. Uh, now we are focusing to the IC engine and IC engine based on the strokes, uh, they are uh, differentiated or classified into four stroke and two stroke. So we need to understand what is the four stroke and two stroke. So initially uh, based on this, uh, we are going to compare four stroke engine and two stroke engine. In four stroke engine, the piston uh, has a two revolution of the crankshaft and in two stroke engine, there is only one revolution of crankshaft. With the four stroke engine, uh, one power stroke is 
occurred in every two revolution of crankshaft or four revolutions of the piston in a two stroke uh, the one power stroke is occurred with each revolution of crankshaft and two revolutions of the piston in the fourth now uh, four stroke heavier flywheel uh, is uh, needed as uh, the power stroke is a single and after that it continues the uh, remaining three strokes so because of that non uniform uh, turning moment diagram or you can say uh, non uniform uh, power distribution we needed higher uh, flywheels high weight flywheels uh, in two stroke there is a uniform power distribution so it can be used a uh, lightweight flywheels for uh, balancing purpose only uh, four stroke engines are heavy and bulky two stroke engines are light and compact four stroke engine uh, having a lesser wear and tear as uh, the power strokes is occur in a uh, two revolutions of the crank shaft or four uh, four revolution uh, of the <coughs> piston but in two stroke uh, there is a continuous power stroke is there so that's why there is a high rate of wear and tear uh, in four stroke power products produce power produce is very less in two stroke theoretically the power produce in uh, twice uh, twice than that of four stroke engine for same size four stroke engine contains walls and wall mechanism two stroke engine contains a port arrangement four stroke engine having a volumetric efficiency more than due to the engine due to greater time of induction but in a two stroke engine uh, the volumetric efficiency lows uh, less because lesser time of induction in four stroke thermal efficiency is also very high as the part load efficient uh, efficiently better in two stroke thermal efficiency is low as a part load efficiency lesser then examples <clears throat> of four stroke engine where it is used but car buses trucks tractors industrial engines airplanes uh, then uh, power generators so where the speed and efficiency is very important at there we are using four stroke engine but where the power is very important for example uh, lawn mowers scooters motorcycles mopeds then uh, uh, prop uh, propulsive ships earth moving machines so in this where the power is main concern at that location or in this application we are using two stroke engine because it creates a huge power uh, or if we can say it generates twice power than that of four stroke engine now in ic engine uh, there are two types of uh, combustion takes place spark ignited and compression ignition so let's see one by one the comparison between uh, these two type of ic uh, engines so in si engine uh, it works on auto cycle in ci engine it works on uh, diesel cycle in si engine uh, we are using petroleum or gasoline or high octane fuel for combustion purpose in ci we are using diesel or high sentient fuel used for combustion in si the high self ignition temperature is necessary in ci as it's a compressive ignition itself creates a high temperature as the pressure and the area get decrease the temperature get increase so low self ignition temperature is uh, acceptable for this uh, ci engine 
In a science, in a fuel and air induced introduced as a gas uh, as a mixture in the form of gas in suction stroke. In CI engine, there is a fuel injector, so it can be injected directly the high pressurized fuel in a compression at the end of compression stroke in a combustion chamber. In CI SI engine, the combustion uh, carburetor is used to mix the air and the fuel. The total control the quantity of the mixture. In CI engine, there is an injector and high pressure pump which is directly used to supply the fuel and the quantity. In SI engine, it uses the spark plug for ignition purpose. In CI engine, as the compressor or compression the ratio or you can say temperature of the air get increased for a while compre while compress uh, compression process, it's a uh, self ignited. In SI engine, we can achieve a compression ratio up to six to ten point five. In CI engine, the compression ratio is achieved from 15, uh, 14 to 22. SI engine high maximum RPM due to the lower weight. In CI engine low maximum RPM because of the higher weight. In SI engine maximum efficiency low due to lower compression ratio. In <coughs> CI engine higher efficiency due to the higher compression ratio. SI engine as the components are less, um, its weight is less lighter or you can say lighter as compared to the CI. And in the CI engine, uh, there are more components, so it's uh, heavy or it's having a higher weight as compared to the SI engine. So let's see the initial or you can say block diagram of the CI engine. So the CI engine, we can, uh, the important components or main components of the CI engine are cylinder, cylinder liner, head, piston, connecting door, crank, wall gear mechanism. There is a, these all parts are shown in the figure properly. And we have to design these parts uh, to, from basic selection uh, to the dimensions, okay? So we can see how we can design it. So <laughs> let's start with the basic one. So first one, we can uh, look at the figure at the top right, uh, top right corner. Uh, we have shown the cylinder, cylinder liner and cylinder head. So primary function of this assembly is of the cylinder is to remain working, uh, retain the working fluid and secondary function is to get the piston. The cylinders are usually made from cast iron and cast steels. The cylinder has um, to which uh, withstand high temperature due to the combustion of fuel. Therefore, the some arrangement must be provided for cooling the cylinder. Uh, in the single cylinder engine, such as a scooter, motorcycle, are generally air cooled type of engines. Uh, they are provided with the fins around the cylinder where the heat transfer takes place. These fins increase the surface area of the cylinder wall and also provide the overall heat transfer coefficient. In multi cylinder, it provides the water jacket around the cylinder to cool it. In smaller engine, uh, the cylinder, water jacket, and the frame are made in a single piece, but in a larger engines, uh, we are manufacture these parts separately. In the cylinders are provided with the cylinder liner so that in case of wear, we can replace the cylinder liner rather than the whole cylinder assembly.
now look at the advantages of this cylinder liner why we need to use these as cylinder liners the main advantage of cylinder liner uh, is uh, is it can be easy, easily replaced uh, instead of replacing the cylinder as the wear and tear takes place inside uh, the chamber high grade wear and heat resistance uh, resistance cast iron can be used for liner and cheap grade material can be used for water jacket separate liner type of construction can be take of the uh, longitudinal thermal expansion so because of that we can choose and an other advantages are it's more economical and easily replace uh, with the as they are worn out then the only cylinder liner is made up better grade as we is as i said we can made up uh, with the cast iron and the water jackets with the low grade cast iron to save them cost of manufacturing so here there are two types of uh, cylinder liners one is the wet liner and second is the dry liner so in a figure a you can say see the dry liner as a dry liner the cylinder which does not have any direct contact with the engine cooling water jacket in the jacket it's known as a dry liner okay uh, but in a weight liner in figure b in the weight liner the water in the jacket is in a direct contact with the outer wall of the cylinder and the water jacket is formed in the space between the liner and the cylinder block the engine having more than 125 mm more uh, the bore size is more than 125 mm usually weight type of liner uh, are mostly used then comparison between a uh, weight liner and dry liner uh, as the weight liner weight liner with the weight liner cylinder blocks are simple and hence easy to manufacture uh, with the dry liner the cylinder blocks are complicated and hence difficult to manufacture with the weight liners uh, cooling is more effective due to the direct contact of jacket water with the liner in the dry liner uh, as the dry liners are having some uh, it is not uh, in uh, it is not in a direct contact with the cylinder as there is a space in between the liner and the cylinder so it is less effective as compared to the weight liner with the weight liner uh, there is a danger of jacket uh, jacket water leakage or you can say there is a possibility of leakage in the water jacket of water jacket uh, but in a dry liner there is no such possibilities uh, with them in the weight liner the replacement of weight liner is very difficult because it is directly connected with the cylinder so we need to replace whole the assembly as it is manufactured in a single piece or you can say in a single so it's very difficult to replace in dry liner we can easily replace the liners as it is not an assembly of that now let's see the material used for cylinder liner uh, the desirable material properties of the cylinder liner the liner material should be strong enough strong harder corrosive resistance and it should provide a good bearing surface so the material used for cylinder liners are gray cast iron alloy cast iron containing the nickel chromium then the nickel chromium um, molybdenum cast steels the cylinder liners are heat treated from the inside and then finished by 
honing operation. Okay, before going further, we will just uh, look at the different stresses uh, which uh, apply or which can be introduced uh, to the cylinder liner. So there are three types of stresses. That is a pressure stress, bending stress, and thermal stress. The pressure stress is occurred due to the high pressure of gas. The cylinder uh, stresses are induced in cylinder liner. Such stresses known as uh, pressure stresses. There are two types of pressure stresses, circumferential stresses, uh, because uh, the circumferential stresses are inotensile in nature and it uh, has a significant value. Second one is a longitudinal, uh, longitudinal stress. Longitudinal stress is a tensile in nature is a small as compared to the circumferential stresses and third one is a radial stress radial stress is a compressive in nature and it is in a small in a magnitude second type of stress uh, the second type of stresses are is uh, stresses are bending stresses the bending stress is due to the Piston side thrust. However, the bending stress is very small when the pressure stress is maximum, hence, we can neglect it. Third one is the thermal stresses. The cylinder liner is subjected to the high temperature, so it is not free to expand, hence, the thermal stresses are built inside the cylinder liner. So it is very important uh, to note that the thermal stresses are usually small. Hence, we can neglect if the uh, heat transfer rate is uh, significant. Okay, so these are the some uh, pressures or we can say some things uh, which we need to be uh, uh, discussed about the different type of liners. Now, uh, some design aspects of the cylinder. In this designing a cylinder for IC engine, it requires follow, following values. First one is the thickness of cylinder wall. The thickness of cylinder wall uh, is subjected to gas pressure or you can say circumferential stress due to the gas pressure, longitudinal stress due to the gas pressure, radial stress due to the gas pressure, bending stress due to, due to the side, piston side thrust and the thermal stresses. So the bending stresses uh, due to the pistons side thrust is very small so we, we are going to neglect it then thermal stresses is also very small so we are going to neglect it so the principal stresses on the cylinder wall are circumferential and longitudinal stresses okay since these two stresses acting at the right direction a right angle to each other therefore the net stress in each the direction is reduced. Second one is a bore and length of the cylinder. So the empirical relation between the bore and the length of the stroke d by l is generally lies in between 1.25 to 2 since uh, there is a clearance on both sides of the wall, therefore the length of the cylinder is takes place as the 15% greater than the length of the stroke. In the other words, the length L is equal to 1.15 into the length of the stroke. So L, capital L is equal to 1.15 small L. Cylinder flange and studs. The cylinder are 
cost integrated integral with the upper half of the crankcase or they are attached to the crankcase by means of a flange with the stud and bolt and nuts the cylinder flange is integrated with the cylinder and it should be made a thicker than the cylinder wall so the flange thickness should be taken 1.2 times of the thickness of the cylinder wall to the 1.4 times of the thickness of the cylinder of wall then the cylinder head usually the separate cylinder head or cover is provided with the most of the engines so it is usually made of a box type section it considerable uh, depth to the accom accommodate different ports for the air and gas passages that is the inlet and exhaust wall plus spark plug okay uh, normally <coughs> The material used for a uh, cylinder head is a grey cast iron, alloy cast iron with the nickel chromium and the nickel chromium with the me melodium cast steel. These are generally uh, materials we are preferred uh, for design purpose of the cylinder head. Now next one is a piston. So the main purpose or main parts of the piston are head or you can say crown the piston head or crown may be flat or convex or concave depending upon the design of the combustion chamber it uh, withstand with the pressure of the gas in the cylinder uh, we can show in the figure also next a uh, piston ring the piston rings are used to seal the cylinder in order to prevent the leakage of the gas and uh, pass to the piston third one is a skirt skirt acts as a bearing uh, between the side thrust and the connecting rod as the walls uh, of the cylinder and the piston pin it is called also gudgeon pin or wrist pin it is connect uh, it can be used to connect the piston to the connecting rod then piston barrel it supports the piston head and provides the seat for a piston ring piston rings we know that it can provide the seal to the cylinder and prevent the leakages piston skirt then uh, reinforcing ribs that ribs act as a stiffener for the piston head and piston skirt basic design consideration uh, for any type of a uh, piston it should have uh, some points uh, which we have noted over here it should have enormous strength to withstand the high gas pressure and inertia pressure it should have minimum mass to maximum inertia forces it should form an effective gas and oil seal for the cylinder it should provide sufficient bearing area to provide undue wear it should disappear or disperse the heat of the combustion quickly to the cylinder walls it should have high speed reciprocating without noise it should be this significant rigid construction to withstand the thermal and mechanical distortion or stresses it should have sufficient support to the piston pin so these are the basic uh, properties which we needed inside the piston so that they can perform its op uh, perform its operation or function properly so material used the commonly used materials for ic engine pistons are cast iron alloy cast iron alloy aluminum alloys alloy cast steels and alloy forged uh, forged steels 
in a alloy cast iron the advantage of alloy cast iron the cast iron has a good strength and good wear resistance at a high temperature and it has a low coefficient of thermal expansion the disadvantage of cast iron the cast iron having a high weight and low thermal conductivity where we can use we can use a moderate power engine with the piston speed below the 6 meter per second the cast iron pistons are used second material is aluminum alloy advantage of that material is uh, it having a high it having a very light weight as the density is very low it good having a very good thermal conductivity the aluminum is three times lighter than the, the cast iron the coating of aluminum oxide or the tin on aluminum alloy piston pro improves the wear properties disadvantage aluminum alloy exists fast reduction in strength at higher temperature or at the temperature it increases its um, strength get reduced the use of uh, when we use the alloy pistons the strength of the forged alloy piston is 40% higher than the alloy pistons made by the die cast iron casting purpose uh, process has the forged aluminum pistons are used for heavy duty and high speed ic engine for aircraft applications or aircraft engine the engine having high power with the piston speed over the 6 meter per second the aluminum pistons are used and last one is alloy cast steel and alloy forged steel the alloy cast steels uh, alloy cast steel pistons are may used for some automotive engine while the forged steel pistons are used in uh, aircraft engines so normally uh, the thermal coefficient or thermal expansions ratio, uh, rates or values uh, which is shown over here uh, thermal conductivity and density of aluminum so that's why <clears throat> we are normally preferring uh, nowadays the um, forged aluminum uh, pistons now the piston head and crown the piston head or crown is designed keeping in view following main considerations so first consideration the thickness of the piston head can be determined by using two strengths uh, the strength and heat dissipation these two uh, basic uh, points on the basis the dimensions or thickness of the piston head can be decided the thickness of piston head is calculated based on the string as well as the heat dissipated and the large uh, and the larger of two values which will text while calculating uh, the piston head having uh, it should have uh, adequate strength to withstand the straining action uh, due to the pressure of explosion inside the cylinder engine In, inside the engine cylinder on the basis of the first consideration of the straining action the thickness of the piston head is determined by treating it as a flat cylinder flat circular plate of uniform thickness fixing at the outer edges and the subjected to uniform distributed load due to the gas pressure over the entire cross section and and second condition it should uh, dissipate the heat trans uh, heat of combustion in the cylinder walls as quickly as possible in this condition or in this basis the second consideration of heat transfer uh, the thickness of the piston head should be such that the heat absorbed by the piston due to the combustion of the fuel is quickly transferred to the cylinder wall what we need to be uh, understood or what we need to be um think while calculation when the thickness of the piston is uh, about to 6 or less than that 
it th there is no ribs are required to strengthen the piston head against the gas load but when the thickness of the piston head uh, is greater than 6 mm then the suitable number of ribs at the center line of the boss extending around the skirt should be provided to distribute the side thr thrust from the connecting rod and thus it pro it uh, it provide the distortion of the skirt the thickness of the ribs may be taxpless as the thickness of the piston head by 3 to the thickness of the piston head by 2.3 so that is an empirical relation you can uh, you can uh, understood properly for engine having length of the stroke a stroke to the cylinder bore or you can say l by d ratio uh, up to the 1.5 the cup is provided at the top of the piston head with a radius equal to 0.7 d uh, it, this is done to provide a space of combustion chamber next in is a piston ring so the basic importance or function of the piston ring the piston rings are used to impart the necessary radial pressure to maintain the seal between the pressure and cylinder bore there are usually made from gray cast iron uh, alloy cast iron because their good wearing properties and also by retain spring characteristics are uh, very high in a high temperature condition the piston rings are mainly in two groups compressor rings or you can say pressure rings and oil control rings or you can say oil scrapper rings or oil rings so where is the located the compression rings the compression rings are placed in the groove provided on the piston barrel the function of compression ring is to seal the space between the piston and the cylinder and provide the leakage uh, of the gases passing from this region to transfer the heat from piston to the cylinder wall and to absorb the part of piston impact due to the side thrust of the connecting rod how many numbers of uh, compressor rings can be used the number of compressor rings used in an automobile and aircraft engine is usually three in some uh, we can use a four whereas the stationary ic engine we have to use a five to seven rings for better heated transfer as it is advisable to use more number of the narrow rings than the few rings the use of more number of narrow rings will be result in a better sailing action second one oil control or you can say oil scrapping rings where is it located the oil control rings uh, which are placed in the grooves provided in the piston barrel are located below the compression rings so the compression rings are at in a top section if you properly observe the piston diagram uh, then <clears throat> oil control rings are uh, located below that the function of oil control rings to scrap the lubricating oil from the surface of the liner during the downward stroke so that the minimum leakage of the lubricating oil pass piston into the combustion chamber then it has to provide the sufficient oil during a port stroke for proper lubrication of the liner how many numbers of oil control uh, rings should be uh, there in a small engine they it may be one oil control uh, oil ring but in large ring uh, large engines uh, it may be two or three rings basic construction of oil control ring the oil control rings are the slot slotted 
all around in periphery and there are small holes in the grooves of the in the grooves of the oil ring this facilitate to drain the oil from the cylinder head cylinder liner past piston into the crankcase material for piston rings due the good wear strength cast iron and alloy cast with the containing nickel chromium and molybdenum are the used material for the piston ring while the designing the rectangular cross section which we consider for the piston the most widely used for compression rings initial the diameter of the piston ring is slightly larger than the cylinder bore to facilitate the piston ring to fit into the grooves on the cylinder barrel and then it go into the cylinder bore a part of the piston ring is cut off as shown in figure the various method of cutting the ends of the piston rings are uh, square cut end angle cut end square steps cut end and round cut end the initial difference between the outer diameter of the piston ring and the cylinder bore is responsible for maintaining the radial pressure between the cylinder uh, piston ring and the cylinder wall okay so the radial thickness of the ring uh, may be obtained by considering the radial pressure uh between the cylinder wall and the ring the width of the top land it uh, could be in the range the width of the top land is made larger in the other ring lands to provide the right ring from the high temperature condition existing at the top of the piston the width will be considered uh as 1.1 uh, uh, 1 to 1.25 uh, times uh, of the uh, thickness of the piston head the depth of the uh, ring grooves should be more than the depth of the ring so that the ring gives does not takes any piston side thrust uh it should be um what you can say uh, depend upon the type of uh, ring we can calculate the groove depth the gap between free end of the ring is given by 1.3 times of the radial thickness to the four, four times of the radial thickness the gap between the rings in the cylinder should be 0.02 times of capital D diameter of the bore or 0.04 times of the capital D the piston skirt the <clears throat> the portion of the piston barrel below the ring section into the open end is known as a piston skirt it acts as a bearing surface for connecting rod side thrust why piston skirt is made oval in shape the piston pins area of the piston skirt is subjected to the significant amount of force in addition to this also subjected to more thermal stresses or expansion than the other area of the piston the piston skirt is made to be elliptical or oval shape as the engine temperature increases during the operation the piston pin bore area expands more therefore at the operating temperature the oval shape of the piston becomes a circular and due to the expansion of the piston pin base area the piston skirts become circular where which uh, matches the exact circular shape of the cylinder base about the length its length should be such that the bearing pressure between the 
piston skirt and piston wall due to the side thrust should not exceed than 0.3 newton per mm square so the low speed engines it is 0.03 newton per mm square and for high speed engine it is 0.3 newton per mm square so the maximum side thrust which is available or you can say uh, empirical relation for the length of the piston total length of the piston l is equal to length of the skirt plus length of the ring section plus top land <coughs> Okay, so in this today's lecture, we will discuss till the piston squat. Uh, in for the uh, in next lecture, we will discuss uh, about the remaining design part of the piston and the other components. Okay, so thank you for uh, joining this lecture. Uh, in description box, I'm sharing my PPT link so you can download and you can start referring or studying the theory related to the each component because it's very important while designing we you should know which components il, is a uh, fail for what kind of different stresses and which material is suitable uh, for what component okay so thank you very much uh, please check link in the description box